Hello everybody, my name is Lee's. Welcome out to my one of my most controversial videos I have ever done. I am now comparing two separate films from Lolita 1962 and, and Lolita 1977 and 1997. And the thing is, well, everybody, this is what's this movie about? Well, let's just say this movie has a very controversial topic. This is based off a 1955 novel. I have not read the novel, so I can't compare it. I'm comparing both films. And the thing is, though, what this film is about, it's a professor who moves into a new town. And the thing is, though, he becomes, in, let's just say, infatuated with a young girl that he's, uh, a young lady around like 14, 15 years old. And he starts to become in love with her, infatuated with her. Let's just say it deals with that subject matter of older men liking young girls. And this entire movie was controversial, and the book was controversial, just because of the subject matter. So when you got the 1962 made by Stanley Kubrick, who made Clockwork Orange, who already had some controversy aside, he also made Lolita, this film. And then you also had somebody who made a, one controversy film, Fatal Attraction, with Michael Keaton, and not Michael Keaton, uh, Michael Douglas. And the thing is, though, this uh, director, Adrian Lin, directed the 1997 thing is though 1962 you could buy off amazon prime you could buy you could buy a like you could buy a streaming whatever but in order to get 1997 one oh no you have to get a physical copy you have to not distribute it anymore that's your own physical copy you cannot sell it it's yours for freaking life and i want to watch both films i want to compare and contrast each film and how they're different from another and it's a very touchy subject matter now let me just say this about this entire thing about how people deal with, you know, older men liking young children or older women liking young boys and then all that. It's a very th difficult subject to talk about, but the thing is, though, when you, we look at modern day point of view, and when I saw these both films, I'm like, it it's perverted, it's a bit uh, sadistic, but I'm like, you know what? I'm watching Game of Thrones that has fucking... <laughs> cannibalism castrations rape scenes uh women getting pregnant women who are pregnant getting stabbed in the freaking stomach i mean it's not for the faint of heart game of thrones i mean and since modern day audiences we've seen so many violent stuff we see michonne killing kids in the walking dead we have so many controversial movies and tv show nowadays where we see mutilations of children uh, mutilations of pregnant women. It's just horrific. It's not an easy watch in some cases, a lot of these things, TV shows. But I feel like the modern day audiences are a little bit desensitized to this amount of violence. And there's not really that too much of the sense of vi uh, too much violence in these films. It's just the subject matter of older men liking young girls. It's a big of a stream. The thing is, though, I'm going to compare and contrast each of these characters. Now, the main character is a man named Humbert. And Humbert in the 1962 novel, I mean the 1962 movie made by Stanley Kubrick, his character is a much more gentleman, uh, gentleman type. He looks like he could stand Lolita's mother. He looks like he could deal with her. Looks like he could have a conversation with her. Does he want to marry her at the end? No, he pities her. He laughs at her nonsense of marriage and all this stuff. He just does. He just gets close to Lolita's mother to get close to Lolita because he's infatuated with her. In the 1962 movie, we don't really know much about Humbert's character. We don't really know what what he, is he doing. We don't well. We don't. We get an idea what he's doing. We he writes a little bit in a not in a, his diary about his love for Lolita and how his desires are. Does it become more perverted on later on in the film? A bit more. The thing is, though, he just seems like a sad old man that just became infatuated when he first saw this girl. The 1962 movie of Humbert's character is a very Hollywood-esque, unrequited love story. The thing is though, the 1997 with Jeremy Irons, there is no doubt about what this character's intention are. Jeremy Irons' character, we get backstory into Humbert's character. In the 1962 movie, we don't get none. He's just an old, older man, going from a professor to a new town, trying to see it. Uh, trying to look for a place to live, and he just became infatuated with Lolita. In this movie, 1997, we get a backstory into Humbert's character of how he lost his uh, first love, how when he was like the age of like 15, he was in love with a girl who was the same age as him, and he lost her through a tragic event, and he's been trying to recreate that love, and he got that love in Lolita. His attraction never left him. He's a broken man in this thing, in film. I know he's a pervert and he's sick in the mind, but the thing is, oh, He's also a broken man because the fact is he lost his first love. He's never grew up. 
you could say it's a Michael Jackson effect, you know, but the man who never grew up, or Peter Pan, like the boy who never grew up. And this character, Jeremy Irons' character, he sticks with that type of ageism, where he sticks with that age group of like, hey, he likes uh, uh, girls of the younger flesh and all that because he lost somebody at that time period that he greatly loves. So he never grew up from the death. He never uh, grieved properly the first love he had, and he let this grief just consume him, and he just uh, tried to find his uh, lost love into somebody else, and he put all his perversions onto this young girl. There's no doubt about it. Jeremy Irons' character, to me, is the better character of Humbert because the fact is Humbert is a bit more assertive. When I say in the 1962 movie he could stand uh, Lolita's mother Charlotte, in this movie, oh no, as soon as he marries her, he tries to get some sleeping pills so, to, so he could drug her so he won't have to sleep with her. He makes a, in every single situation where he's in with Lolita's mother, you could just tell he wants to leave the room immediately. The 1962 version, he's just like, yeah, he could have a conversation with her. He could play a game with her. He could laugh, giggle, and all this stuff. He could hide behind his mask. And this one, it looks like he could barely stand Lolita's mother. And with and with Humbert's character, I always find him a bit more tragic in the 1997 film. He's a bit more perverted, his, uh, and he narrates all his intentions towards Lolita about what he's going to do to her, what he's going to do to Lolita's mother. All of it's more intentful. All of, all of it we know about what he's thinking about in every single second because his entire narration is dropped the entire film. And so when it comes to the main character of Humbert, the uh, freaking man who likes the young girl, the 1997 film did a better job. I enjoy Jeremy Irons' character a bit more because we got his backstory. You get not just, hey, he's an old man that just suddenly fell in love with Lolita. In the 1997 film, it goes into great detail about his attraction towards that type of young girls. And the thing is, though, I prefer that one. I prefer more detail in that uh, way. So Humbert's character in 1997 was better. And then we look at the, uh, the also Lolita's mother, Charlotte. Let's go to 1962 film. In the 1962 film, she is much more clean. She's much more uh, in tune with her surroundings. She feels like a mother towards Alita. We get a backstory of her. In the 1962 film, we get a backstory of her, but we don't get a backstory into uh, Humber's character in the 1962 film. In the 1962 film, we get Charlotte, Alita's mother, how she lost her husband and she's trying to create, create that love. She's trying to find a lost love. She's a tragic character in many ways. And I do enjoy her character. And she does feel like a mother figure to Lolita. It feels like she still misses her youth. She wants to have a good time. But she still wants to find love and happiness. While tries to raise Lolita in a proper way. In the 1997 film. It's very clear she does not give. Uh, she rarely cares for her daughter. It's like she got pregnant at a young age. And she wants to go live out her life. She doesn't want any responsibility. She's not even really trying to care for Lolita. She's like, okay, I'm going to send her to boarding school to get her away. Because she's causing me too much headaches. It seems more like a sister-sister relationship. Because then you really get the age feel of how old Charlotte is. And how young she had Lolita. Charlotte is a tragic character in both films. But in the 1997 film, she seems dirty. She's not clean. She's disorganized. She's less, she has a realistic approach. In the 1962, it was more like a mother-daughter relationship, but in the 1997 film, oh my god, it's much more like a sister-sister relationship. And the fact that she is so desperate on Humbert, like she's literally trying to get on his lap, she's literally trying to do so much more. She seems so much more desperate. If you want more to clean, trying to be a housewife, trying to be a good mother type, uh, Charlotte, then you're going to want the 1962. But if you want the dirty, desperate, I need this, I need this, I need someone to love me, I need it. Like, the desperation is so much more clear in the 1997 film. And to me, 1997 film beats this one, even though I think I could deal with more than 1962 than the 1997 version of Charlotte, Lolita's mother. And let's talk about Lolita herself, the main character of this first title. Let's just say this, 1962, the entire culture back then was a little bit different. You know, girls can't, there's nothing explicit about her sex scenes or anything like that. Is she a flirtatious girl? Yes, she's a teenager. Does she kind of have a thing for Humbert? Yes. I would say the 1962 film, she is a bit more, I don't want to say manipulative. She's a, she's a little bit more classy in the way she talks. And she actually does seem like she cares about Humbert in some type of way. She actually cares about the man, her stepfather, who is technically grooming her. She does care for this man in some uh, case or form. But in the 1997, you could tell this girl does not give a shit. 
it also could play is a fact that her mother is not really a mother in her life it also plays the fact that she doesn't have a father figure in her life and she is just in 1997 let's just say if you were to tell me that girl didn't lose her virginity uh, if that girl lost her virginity before the guy came in uh, before humbert's character came in i would not be surprised because this girl she was so much more assertive she was sitting on humbert's lap jeremy iron's lap uh we get a little bit a bit more explicit sex scenes nothing like like there's grinding and all that stuff but there's nothing like penetration and all that stuff but she's clearly a little bit more much more manipulative she's a little bit more assertive than the 1962 film and i would not be surprised if this character of her version lolita lost her virginity way before humbert's character came around she's a bit more manipulative and the thing is all the fact is she is not as caring. She does not give a shit about Humbert's, uh, Jeremy Irons' character. She cares about money. She cares about her happiness. Anybody else is inconsiderate. And in some cases, I feel like the relationship between her and Humbert, even though it's, she's a bit, uh, Jeremy Irons is a bit more sadistic with her and a bit more perverted with her in the 1997 film, it's just so much more like she needs a father figure and Jeremy Irons' character seems like he is, he loves Lolita, but then he gets annoyed by her because in some cases he has to act like a father to her. In the 1962 version, I don't feel like there was like a father-daughter kind of even relationship that she, uh, that the Lolita and Humbert were like trying to have. Uh, it felt like that she was like, hey, I'm into older men. And she she's smart enough. She's intelligent enough. She doesn't need really a father figure. She needs somebody in her life that ain't going to leave her. But she is manipulative as heck as well. So in both films... If you want the classier version and a, a bit more of an intelligent Lolita who's a, not as spoiled, I would go for the 1962. But if you want someone who's needy, greedy, don't give a shit about anybody in her path, that's the 1997 version. You could tell she's a broken character well with no mother figure in her life, hardly any mother figure in her life, no father uh, figure. And she really uses Humbert as a personal bank account and he uses her as his own personal sex toy. So in my personal opinion, 1997 film, Lolita... I'd rather have because it's so much more realistic and it has a different dynamic. I say the main thing is all three of these characters, uh, Humbert, Lolita, Charlotte, Lolita's mother, they're all more tragic characters in the 1997 version. And I really feel like they're all so broken in their own ways so with Humbert's losing the love of his life and he's trying to recreate that love into Lolita. Then you got Lolita 1997 where she is just doesn't care about anybody because she had no way to teach her about responsibility or about respect. And Charlotte in the new in the 1997 film, she's so desperate. She doesn't care about any, but she doesn't care about Lolita. She cares about her own happiness. And so the dynamics of each character is so with each character when they are together is just so unique and different from the 1962 film. 1962 film doesn't show as much graphical uh, show so much graphical uh, details about. Uh, you know, like sexual nature and all that stuff, but it's much more Hollywood-esque. Really? But the thing is, though, in the 1962 film, it's very Hollywood-esque. There are scenes where, like, a big band of music will come out when there's a big dramatic scene. It's very Hollywood-esque. 1997 film is so much more darker and freaking realistic, and it's just, to me, a bit more entertaining. Now, again, should kids watch this? Absolutely not. Should young adults watch this? Well, we watch Game of Thrones. I mean, freaking cuties is on Netflix, for God's sake. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what to tell you about that, but that, that film was made, and I don't even want to go into detail about that film, but if you're looking to me, the more controversial movie is the 1997 film. Which one is the more gra graphical, 1997? Which one's the more realistic, and which one's the better film? It's the 1997 film. So, I'll, uh, both Lolitas, I hope y'all enjoy this video. I just want to give my personal opinion about this very interesting film. I believe you should at least watch both films at least once in your life to just check it out to see the differences and to really compare and contrast the characters. But I can actually see this thing on like on a college exam, like a college essay to compare films and contrast them, to compare and contrast the films and to write essays and theses about them. I can see this as one of those types of movies. But overall... I had a good experience with both films. I enjoyed both films. I prefer 1997 because it was a little bit more darker, more realistic. Would I rewatch these films again? Probably not. No. Maybe I'm like a bit older and I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's go see the, a very controversial movie. But 
Overall, my personal opinion of Lolita in 1997 is superior to 1962. Never read the book. I don't think I'm going to even read the book. But overall, that's my personal opinion. What would you all think? Did you think Charlotte in 1997 was better than 1962? You think Stanley Kubrick uh, really overdid it in his work? You think uh, Adrian Lynn did a better job? What's your personal opinion, everybody? Thanks, Lisa. Everybody. Bye-bye.